Grace and peace multiply to you and yours and knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Most High God, the Savior to those that keep your commandments. I hope everybody's having a great day today and thank God that he allowed us to wake up and see another day with his precious breath of life. Wonderful blessing to wake up and see another day. Now, today's lesson is called The Rock of Our Salvation. And who is that? That's Jesus, right? But he's also the rock of offense. Because we've grown up a church and we go along with what the pastor say. We, amen to this and amen to that. But we was never taught to research what the pastor told us. We just go along with it. My pastor say, but what does the Bible say? Okay? You got to compare those things. If, if what your pastor saying is not in line with what the Bible say, something ain't right. You got to check it out. Find out what's really going on. So, you know, when, when, when time goes by and we hear things that that sound different from what our pastor's been teaching us, or we hear something that we've never heard before, we can easily get offended, right? Easily. But I'm going to tell you, truth hurts. And the truth can offend you. And the rock of our salvation, all he did was bring the truth. And people got offended at him. So, <laughs> but if all he did was bring the truth and they got offended at him, they what, what did they do? They turned around and followed something else. And that's still going on today. So we have to learn how to open our minds. We have to have an open mind to what the scriptures are saying. That's, that's, why, that's why he said it himself. He said, he that believes on me as the scripture have said. Not what your pastor said. Not what your mom said. Not what your daddy said. Not what your cousin said. Not what your uncle said or your auntie. Not what the scriptures say. It's, about, it's just, just that simple. So, open up your Bibles to uh, Deuteronomy 32. We're going to start in the Old Testament. So, break that chain. Because a lot of people don't want to deal with the Old Testament. But you can't have one without the other. Deuteronomy 32, beginning with verse 8. It says, When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Whoa, what number is that? Twelve. <laughs> not thirteen, not eleven, but twelve. You got 12 hours in the day. You got 12 hours in the night. You got 12 months in the year. <laughs> you know, all things according to the 12 tribes of Israel. Just had to throw that out there. But I'm going to read on. Verse 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found them in the desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led them about. And instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. As the eagle stirs up her, her nest, flutters over her young, spread the broad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. That's in the commandments. Don't serve no other God before him. Verse, verse, skip to verse 15. It says, but Jeshuan wax fat and kick. Whoa! <laughs> what, what, what do you do as soon as you get a little money? As soon as you get a little substance? As soon as you get a little status? You forget your God. He said, Jeshuan wax fat and kick. I got a lesson coming up called Man's Pride. We tend to let that pride get in the way. And it will lead us on a path to destruction. It will lead us on a path to the Lord whooping that tail. Bottom line, 
he will he will correct you. But just want to wax fat and kick, thou art waxing fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. Hmm, ain't that ain't that something? And that's still going on right now. People are forsaken the God that created them. Let's go to John chapter 6. Let's go to the New Testament, John chapter 6. I promise I'll try. I will try not to be long with it today. John chapter 6, beginning with verse 35. John 6 and 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Oh, what did I mention to you a, minute, a moment ago? That Jesus said, He that believeth on me as the scripture hath said. Now, we were living in Jesus' times, so it was written down for our time, it was written down for us. To study to show ourselves approved and to have faith on, on what the scriptures say about the Messiah. And it said right here in John 6, verse 35, it said, I am the bread of life. He that he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Hmm. But I said unto you, that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which he hath sent me, that of all which that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing but to raise it up again at the last day. Hmm. When he going to raise it up again? At the last day. That's why he said, He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Because he's going to raise it up at the last day. Skip to verse 41. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. See, no belief. No, no, no belief in Prophecy, just like today, you show people prophecy, they do not believe. You try to teach them, they will not understand. Because the God of this world has blinded their eyes, have blinded their minds. Because the Lord came according to prophecy, and they were supposed to be learned of Israel. They were supposed to know prophecy, yet they didn't understand. See how history repeats itself? When you don't know your past, you will not know your future. Verse 42. Is that right? Verse 42? Yeah. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he said, I have come down from heaven? I came down from heaven. Well, if you'd have studied some more, you would have known. Verse 43, Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which shall sent me draw him. Whoa. So no man can come to Jesus unless the Father draw him. Ain't that so? So those people that's got reprobate minds, that means what? They have continued to reject the word of the Lord their entire lives. So the father ain't going to draw them. Where's their final destination going to be? The lake of fire. Because the truth has offended them. Hmm. Verse 45. As it, it, it is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the father cometh unto me. Not that any man have seen the Father, save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. That's right. No man has dealt with the Father. He 
you only dealt with the begotten son. And that's in spirit and flesh. Now I'm skip to verse 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Skip to verse 60. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Does this offend you? <laughs> he asked his own disciples, Does this offend you? Y'all supposed to be my voice. Y'all supposed to be walking with me in truth and righteousness. And I say something you don't understand and it offends you? <laughs> his own disciples. I'm just going to show you how Israel is. Uh, verse 62. What? And if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before. I wasn't supposed to read that. Verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So what gives you spirit and life? The words. That's why Jesus tell us, <laughs> be, beware of every idle word that come out of our mouth because we're going to be judged on those. That's why it's good to speak good and not evil. Verse 64, but there are some of you that believe not. Hmm. That's right. Now, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 8. I'm going to show you something. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 13. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear. Let him be your dread. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling, and for a rock of offense. To both the houses of Israel. For a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Verse 15. And many among them shall stumble, and fall, and be broken, and be snared and be taken. Because mm. what? They're offended by that word, right? They want to be like the status quo. They want to be like, yeah, they want to do like everybody else doing, right? But Jesus said, broad is the way to destruction and narrow is the way to salvation and few there be that fight. Skip to verse 20. It says, to the law and the testimony. Uh-oh. That's Old Testament prophecy and the New Testament. Say, to the law and the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. <laughs> That's cold. That is cold. Uh, 1 Peter 2. Verse 52, because, you know, Jesus even said, I believe it's in Matthew chapter 10, 34. Let me check it out right quick. Where he said, I ain't come to bring, I ain't come to bring peace. I came to bring the soul. Let me, let me see. Matthew 10 and 34, it says, Think not that I have come to send peace on earth. I, I came not to send peace, but a sword. This is Jesus' words. This sweet Jesus. <laughs> he ain't sweet Jesus. He, he said, I came to bring a sword. And he going I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read into it. Then he gonna show you where that sword is gonna be. And why? Verse 34. I mean 35. For I have come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter and the daughter in law against her mother in law. Verse 36, and a man's foes shall be there of his own household. What? A 
a man's foe is going to be of his own household? That's right. When we get this truth. Because when people come to the truth, they think it's going to be easy. It's going to be an easy walk. You know, everybody going to be happy. You know, <laughs> when, you, when you get the truth and everybody love you, you ain't got the truth. But when you get the truth and people start having an evil, wicked spirit on them against you, you know, you walk into a room and you can feel the tension, you know. People have, uh, 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 people calling you names and, and, and talking about you behind your back and to your face. You know what I'm saying? E even to the point of calling you hypocrites when you try to walk according to this word. <laughs> well, when that happens, now you got the truth. Because it's not an easy walk. It's proven from the prophets to the apostles. Jesus tells you, you're going to go through some suffering. He said, if he suffered, you're going to suffer too. But that, I didn't finish that, did I? Uh, yeah, verse, verse 37. He said, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he, and, 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 and Jesus said this in another place too. I believe it's Matthew 19. But and maybe in, also in Luke and, uh, but I just, <laughs> the truth hurts. He said, verse skip down. Verse 39, he that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Verse 41, he that receiveth the prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward, and he that receiveth the righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. He said that, that he said that sword is a man's foe is gonna, gonna be in his own house because it's gonna separate who's gonna really be on the Lord's side. Because a lot of people faking the fun. That's why you got football stadiums full of people claiming to be holy, righteous people. Claim to be men and women of God. So straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads unto life. <laughs> few that be the find it. We got to be part of the few. It's just that simple. Now, what was I saying to go to 1 Peter 2? My bad. Since I mentioned it, I had to. I had to go ahead and make sure I read it correctly. But uh, First Peter two. Yeah, I'm good on time. First Peter chapter two. And begin with verse one. Wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile. Mm. You know what God is? You don't, you don't want God to come out your mouth. You don't want to speak evil things. And hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, see? Verse 2, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Uh, verse 3, if so, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood. That's what we're supposed to be. To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion the chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Hmm. 
Verse 7. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Verse 8. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Mm. Verse 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Go to Mark chapter 4. Mark 4. Mark 4, beginning with verse 3. Mark 4, beginning with verse 3. Verse 3. Hearken, behold, there went out a sword or silver, and it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up, and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And, and other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit, and sprang up, and increased and brought forth some 30, and some 60, and some 100 for it. <clears throat> uh, verse 9. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all things are done in parable that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. Hmm. So you got to repent. You got to change your ways. You got to change your mindset, your way of thinking. Verse 13, And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will you know all parables? The sword went the sword soweth the word, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately. What? Satan come how long? Satan cometh immediately. Him or one of his evil angels coming to cock block that truth. They, they don't want you to get edified for salvation. They want you to live in darkness. They want you to live in lies. He said, Satan cometh immediately. I can read you in, in the, in, I, I believe it's the very first chapter of Job, where as soon as the Lord told Satan, don't, don't, to, don't take his life, he was gone right away. Didn't waste no time to go vex Job. Proof is in the pudding. Say, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Mm. That happened to me. Man, somebody gave him the word. Oh, it must be meant. It must be meant for us to meet. <laughs> you know, it must it must be meant for uh, for me to meet you to get this word. See him next week. <laughs> they ain't want to say hi. Because they got vexed. They was weak. You have to be strong this thing. It's not an easy walk. Now, let's go to, uh, okay. Let's go to 2 Peter 2. Second Peter two verses one and two. What is that right? Second Peter two verses one and two. Hmm. Ah, yeah. 
verse 1. It says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as, as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. Said many. Broad is the way to destruction, right? Said many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. You bring you talk about the true and living word of God. <laughs> they gon' they gonna feel like it's evil. They're gonna be completely backwards or completely contrary to the word of God. That's why. The majority of the world goes to church on Sunday, the first day of the week, instead of the Lord's Sabbath day. See? Proof is in the pudding. Okay, moving on. John 18. John chapter 18, beginning verses 33. Hmm. Okay, I'm running out of time. I think I didn't babble too much. Let me see. John 18, okay. verse 33. Hmm. No, skip that. Skip that. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 22. It says, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge? Yes, they do. <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep reading. Turn you at my reproof. And behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have said it not all, all, all my counsel and was not reproved. I, I also laugh at your calamity. I will mock with your fear. When your fear cometh as the desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me early, but they will not find me. Mm. For that they hated knowledge. What? <laughs> and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They were none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way, and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Hmm. This is those that get offended at the word of God and continue to let, them, uh, let it offend them. <laughs> Instead of reading it for themselves and researching. Now, let's go to Matthew 22. Matthew 22. Beginning with verse 23. Matthew 22 and 23. Now this is this is uh, the Sadducees uh, up against Jesus. Same day, the same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, if a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were, now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brothers. Likewise, the second also, and the third unto the seventh, and the last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be, of the seven? For they all had her. Verse twenty-nine. Jesus answered and said unto him, Ye do err. Not knowing the scriptures. Whoa. See, Jesus was cold. Say, so you don't know the scriptures. And 
they supposed to. They Sagittarius, right? He says, you, ye do err not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Verse 30. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. But as such in the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read? <laughs> That's what we should tell people now. Have you not read? Read it. Read it for yourself. I ain't lying to you. Have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Go to Matthew chapter 19. You see when the Pharisees came up against him. Matthew 19, beginning at verse 1. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read? <laughs> See? Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh? Verse 6. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Verse seven. They say unto him, Why did Moses then give? Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? And he said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffer you to put away your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. Got a lot of brothers out there now in these camps. Tell them, tell them men to get rid of their wives. And vice versa. There's just a bunch of wickedness going on. Got a tribe of spirits out there. So be mindful. Uh, where was I? Verse 9, and I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife except to be for fornication and shall marry another committeth adultery. Mm. And whosoever marrieth her which is put away doth commit adultery. So Jesus had to set the Pharisees straight. Even though they were supposed to have knowledge of the Torah, <laughs> the five books of Moses, the Old Testament period. They didn't know certain things. First Corinthians two. First Corinthians two, beginning with verse six. How be if we speak wisdom among them that are perfect? Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the Spirit of a man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. 
how, how is it given? Do, do we got to pay to get it? No, you say given freely. Mm. Yeah, you pay your tithes, but if you pay your tithes to a, a pastor's got jet plane <laughs> and going to church on Sunday and eating all kind of unclean foods, <laughs> man, you're wasting your time, your money, and your energy, and your salvation. But anyway, uh, but, but which the Holy Ghost teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual, verse 14, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. That's why I say try the spirits. But he that the spiritual judge judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Verse 16, for who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? You got a lot of people like that. They think they, they, think they know the mind of the Lord. <laughs> and, they, and they really don't know that the knowledge of God is infinite. It goes on forever and ever. But we have the mind of Christ. Hmm. First Peter 2, again. A few more after this. I'm almost done. Thank you for bearing with me. Been a little under the weather lately, so it's like, ooh, trying to come back. It's First Peter 2. Peter 2, beginning with verse 1. Oh. Okay, I read this. Well, I read some of this. I'm going to read some more. Whoa, 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 whoa. Verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Verse 5. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he, that hath, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believeth, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the, which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And the stone of stumbling and the rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they, they were appointed. Verse 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal peace, priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in the time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Um, skip down to verse 21. It says, for well, even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should show, that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. See, I mentioned that earlier. No evil speakings was found in his mouth. We got a lot of people just backbiting and <laughs> whispering and <laughs> talking all kind of crazy stuff about people. For no reason. <laughs> and whatever comes out your mouth is ultimately what's, what's on your mind, what's on your heart. Uh, keep reading. It says, uh, yeah, verse 23. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, 
but but committed himself to him that judges righteously, who his own self bear our, our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Verse 25, for ye were as sheep going astray, but I now return unto the shepherd and the bishop of your souls. That's right, Jesus said, how often would I have gathered my gather my people like chickens, uh, hens gather up chickens under, under their wings, but they refuse, just like today. They refuse to come into the truth. They refuse to come out of the world. Uh, John 6. John chapter 6. Verse 61 through 68. Verse 61. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Does this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that are speaking to you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From, the, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Whoa. So they was offended, right? <laughs> wow. Just, just, like the, just like the young rich fool <laughs> had great possessions, was right there with Jesus. Could have walked with him and been one of his disciples. But he wouldn't give it up. That money. <laughs> That's why I call him a rich fool. Uh, where was I? My bad. It says, uh, yeah, they, they walk no more with him. Verse, verse 67. Then says Jesus unto the twelve. Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. That's right. You, you right there with the Messiah and you going to turn from him? Because you get offended by something he say and all he bringing is the truth? <laughs> Man. Hmm. Just go to show you who Israel is. We still like that today. Ain't nothing changed. <laughs> nothing. Uh, that was the end of that. Say, you got the words of eternal life. Where else we gonna go? I'm following you, Jesus. <laughs> Hosea 13. There's a couple more after this. These are one liners anyway. Hosea's right after uh, Daniel. Hosea 13, verse 4. It says, Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me, for there is no Savior besides me. Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45, verse 21. It says, tell you and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who have declared this from the ancient time? Who have told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Hmm. There is none, none but the true and living God. His words may offend, but they are the words to give you eternal life. They are the words to give you salvation. Isaiah 43, verse 11. 
He said, I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no saying. We know that there's two in the Godhead, Elohim, Father and the Son, but the one that's been putting in the work is the Son of God, the Savior. Because when he returns, once he clean up all the wickedness on his planet, what are he going to do? He's going to save us, those that be so blessed, those that barely make it in. You know what I'm saying? Those that have been walking in this thing right since the Lord opened our eyes. You know? Those that stopped following traditions of man. You know, what, 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 what do we have uh, just recently, uh, St. Patrick's Day or something? I mean, really? Ain't got nothing to do with God. The traditions of man. So, that's the end of the lesson. The rock of our salvation, the rock of offense. <laughs> I hope somebody got some understanding, and I thank you for your time. Grace and peace multiply to you and yours in the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Most High God, the Savior to those that keep His commandments. Much love, peace.